Hellas vulgus is basically a lateral deviation of the first ray, which can be associated with the bunion formation and the overriding of the second toe. The deformity is multifactorial. It has a genetic predisposition, but using high heel and arch or badly controlled shoes is one of the cause of Hellas, Hellas vulgus deformity. The deformity looks as if it are uniplanar, but actually it is having a component of pronation as well as rotation. Regarding a pathophysiology, first of all, there is a weakness of the medial side of the capsule. This causes lateral deviation of the hallux. In this, metatarsal head deviates laterally, uh, deviates medially, leaving the sesamoid bone laterally translated relative to the metatarsal head. The adductor force, adductor tendons becomes the first force to cause even for more lateral migration while the medial side capsule is attenuated. Then with the passage of time, the lateral, the EHL and FHL forces also are transferred laterally, which further contrib contributes to the deformity. Moreover, with the passage of time, the abductors of the foot move plantar to the axis and cause a pronation of the foot. Whenever I see such patients, I need to examine the shoes of the patient, check for the callosities or a bunion formation, palpate them, Check for deformity in the hind foot, adding up a deformity into the into the forefoot, especially the helix. Check for the metatarsal heads and any synovitis in the joints. Check for the correctability of the helix vulgus. Check for any gastrosoleus tightness as well in these patients. Check for tarsometatarsal joint movements as well as the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joint, especially for confirmation of pain, which can be a reason for synovitis slash arthritis. Also check for the neurovascular status of the patient, which because surgical intervention in cases can cause a dorsal branch uh, uh, sensation loss. After assessing the patient, I would like to take an X-ray, which will be a weight-bearing P and lateral views. In a PA view, I want to measure intermetatarsal angle should be, which should be less than 10, helis valgus angle, which should be less than 15, distal metatarsal articulation angle, which it should be less than 15, and interphalangeal angle, which should be less than 10. These angles are quite important and significance is that the distal metatarsal articulation angle correction is important in adolescence with a form of cuneiform osteotomy or the proximal metatarsal osteotomy or fusion. The helis vulgus and Significance is that the amount of hellas vulgus deformity correlates with the distal metatarsal osteotomy and type of osteotomy. The pain in the metatarsophalangeal joint helps me to decide which type of operative intervention will be feasible in case of arthritis. Distal metatarsal articulation angle is important because if it is not corrected, it will worsen the deformity as it is not congruent. 
and interphalangeal deformity can be additive deformity while hallus valgus deformity is there as any uh, foot deformities uh, conservative management has a role a white toe box can be for shoe can be advised a shoe medic modification like spacers implant or medial arch support can be indicated deformity is never corrected for cosmetic purposes and if that is a case a second opinion is indicated a mild deformity is with a hellas mongol vulgus angle of less than 25 moderate is 25 to 40 and severe is more than 40 intermetatarsal angle of less than 13 is mild 13 to 15 is moderate and 16 to 20 is severe as previously stated the type of osteotomy is indicated with respect to the deformity so if it's mild deformity we can do a chevron osteotomy with a modified mcbride a moderate osteotomy a moderate deformity can have a scarf or osteotomy with modified mcbride and a severe deformity may need double osteotomy as well as lepidus The aim of any surgery is to align the metatarsophalangeal joint as well as interphalangeal joint to a level that you ha- can have a uh, 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 reposition the you can reposition the first metatarsal so that it can continue to be weight bearing. A modified McGride procedure is a procedure or just soft tissue procedure. Basically it is never done in isolation and basically it is release of adductor muscles from the lateral sesamoid then do lateral capsulotomy as well and then a medial capsular plication so there are three things first is me adductor release then lateral capsulotomy and then medial capsular plication a chevron osteotomy is a v-shaped osteotomy it's extra capsular osteotomy It's inherently stable, but fixation with a screw is indicated to avoid malunion. A Aiken osteotomy is a hellas valgus interphalangeal osteotomy, which is basically a medial closing wedge osteotomy. A diaphyseal scarf osteotomy is 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 basically nowadays utilized more commonly. A scarf osteotomy is is done by medial approach. It's a versatile osteotomy which cause can correct multiplanar deformity. It's a Z type of cut where the it's the thicker the 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 the, the, the cut is done so that the distal part is thicker to avoid fracture by screw. It is started from the first cent one centimeter proximal to the articular surface. When the osteotomy is done, the horizontal cast should be perpendicular to the uh to the floor and headless screws can be used lepidus procedure is a first metatarsal arthrodes which is indicated in half mobile joints and especially in the adolescence phase a medial cuneiform osteotomy is a open wedge osteotomy which is indicated due to open physis complication of the surgery is stuffing in scarf osteotomy where one of the cortex collapses or the other one this is happens because the the osteotomy cuts are not optimal and the this dorsal dorsal um, uh, cut is made uh, smaller which causes a fracture helis vargas is helis vargas is possible because of excessive release transverse metatarsal ja is possibility in degenerative ca- few cases like rheumatoid arthritis a fusion is indicated a keller resection arthroplasty might be indicated which is a resection of the proximal phalanx and a replacement is 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 also one of the options in rheumatoid arthritis we do fusion of the metatarsophalangeal joint and stains b procedure for the lesser toes let the lepidus procedure that is first metatarsal metatarsal joint arthrodesis is also added together with 
treatment for rheumatoid arthritis foot. Stains B procedure is basically a dorsal approach incision with a subtotal phalangectomy. Reduction of the plantar plate under the metatarsal head, placement of K-wire, and flexor and extensor suture together to improve the stability. Uh, RCT done in Netherlands by Dienick showed that scarf and chevron osteotomy has no statistical difference with respect to AOFS scores. Another meta-analysis by Smith showed that scarf osteotomy works better uh, for the first and second intermetarsal angle while using uh, for Hellas bulkus correction.